In this video, we're going to cover Atari Link simulation on the Xbox Series X and S version of RetroArch. <laughs> All right, my fellow Lynx fans, welcome to the latest edition of the Atari Lynx setup guide for Xbox Series X and S. Really, nothing has changed in the emulator itself, but the setup has changed slightly due to the location where you need to place your Lynx boot image. So this guide is just an update for that. Now, this guide is assuming you followed one of my new RetroArch setup guides for Xbox. If not, refer to the Xbox RetroArch playlist in the description below, get it set up, then come back here and follow along. But let's go ahead and dive in. Now the first step to getting Atari Lynx simulation up and running is to source a lynxboot.image file. This is required to get the emulator to run, otherwise you just sit at a gray screen. Various ways to source a lynxboot image file, choose the one that works best for you and run with it. Just make sure it's named lynxboot.img. And once you have your lynxboot image sourced and named properly, we just need to add it to our RetroArch system folder. So if you are using a USB system folder, just open up your USB drive on your computing device of choice and drag the Lynx boot image right inside the system folder you created. Or if you have your system folder still in the Q drive, open up your Durango FTP app and start the file share. Now on your computing device of choice, access your Xbox FTP file share using your preferred method. Navigate into your local folder, find the RetroArch folder, local state folder, system folder, and drag the Lynx boot image right in. And with that in place, we're ready to move on to Atari Lynx games. So Lynx games come with a .lnx extension. You could zip them if you want, not really necessary, they're pretty tiny. And again, just a number of ways to source Atari Lynx games, so choose the method that works best for you and run with it. But once you have your Lynx games sourced, we just need to add them to our preferred storage method. So if you are on USB, uh, I made a games playlist, so I'm just gonna drag them right in. Or if you're on dev mode using the S drive, Go back to the root of your Xbox file share, S drive, program files, Windows apps, RetroArch folder with the x64 at the end, the games folder you made, and drag them right in. But once you have that BIOS file and games placed where they need to be, we're ready to move over to RetroArch. Now back over on the Xbox, got my USB drive back in place, and I'm ready to begin loading Atari Lynx content. So one method of doing so, go to load content, navigate to the drive your games are stored in. So USB will be E under dev mode, USB will be D under retail mode, and then the internal will be under S. But navigate to the folder, find your games folder, find your Atari Lynx games, choose a game, choose a core, tell it to run. Now I don't personally prefer this method, so what I like to do instead is make a games playlist. So the easiest way to do so is to head down to import content, and as long as your games are not zipped up, you can go to scan directory, navigate to your Atari Lynx game folder, and tell it to scan the directory. And once it's finished, you'll have a new Lynx playlist here on the left. And one of the nice things about doing the scan playlist option, you can head over to the main menu, online updater, playlist, thumbnail updater, choose your Lynx playlist folder. And now we have nice box arts for our Atari Lynx games. But from here, we can choose a game, tell it to run. It'll ask us which core we want it to run in. And for this tutorial, I am using Beetle Lynx. And as long as you have that Lynx boot image placed correctly, your games will boot right up and allow you to start playing. And that's going to do it as far as basic Atari Lynx setup is concerned. That one file being placed is the only real uh, tricky part to this one, but otherwise you can enjoy uh, Atari Lynx handheld gaming on your Xbox Series X and S, and it is quite humorous. But now let's go ahead and talk about some of the advanced core options available to us within Beetle Lynx. Not much here, so this will go pretty quick. So going into your RetroArch quick menu, go down to Options. And our first option is to auto-rotate the screen. This will work for a vast majority of Lynx games. If there are games that don't work with auto-rotate screen on, you can manually change the layout by pressing the select button if you choose manual, or you could just choose a degree of rotation. And next we have color format. By default, it is set to 16-bit, but on Xbox, you could set this to 32-bit, so that way you just get nicer colors. That option does require a restart though, so do be aware of that. And that's gonna do it for the core options. Now one last thing I'd like to cover here real quick before we call it is shaders. Going into the shader tab, you can enable them and we can load them up, head into the handheld folder here, and we can apply an LCD grid shader. 
There's no link-specific shaders, unfortunately, but we can apply something like LCD Grid version 2, which I think does a pretty good job of simulating a link screen. Not not quite the most accurate thing, but I mean, pretty pretty good. And again, shaders are all personal preference, so there's no right or wrong shader. Just choose the one you think looks good for the games you're playing and run with it. But once you have the shader set the way you want it, head back into the shader tab, go to the save option here, and you can save them as a core preset, so that way every time you load up a Lynx game, that's the shader that's going to greet you. And that's going to do it for Atari Lynx emulation. One extra file required to get this one going, just make sure you get that placed correctly and you are going to be good to go with your Lynx gaming. But thank you so much for making it to the end of today's tutorial, it means the world to me if you spend even one minute on this channel and help us make it grow. Now I do have a couple of huge favors to ask all of you here at the end. If you haven't done so already, please hit that like or dislike button, just depending on how much you like today's tutorial, as well as that sub and notification bell. That way you know when new content hits the channel and there is a lot coming your way, and I'd love to have you along for the ride. For anyone interested in further helping support the channel, you can also check out that join button here on YouTube or the Patreon link in the bottom right hand corner of the screen. A little goes a long way to keeping this place going and bringing this content to all of you. Shout out to all of our current backers, you're amazing, thank you for keeping us going. But until next time, my wonderful internet peeps, you all stay awesome, keep on gaming, and we'll see you back next video.